Hey, hello and welcome to this very special tutorial by Flowmotion. Because today we are going to create something that looks very awesome in a dead easy way. So if you want to learn something about the 3D space in After Effects, about setting up a camera and lights, then just follow me into After Effects to recreate this epic intro. So as promised, let's really make this one a dead easy tutorial because I know that many of you just start with the 3D space in After Effects and this is a tutorial on how to set this up when you're doing this for the first time. So today I am going to show you how to create a 3D scene and also how to set up a light and a camera, some depth of field to make this really look realistic. So let's create everything from scratch in the exact same way as you would do it when you would build it out of paper. But before we do that, if you like what you see and if you really get inspired by that, then feel free to click on that subscribe button because in that way I can do way more tutorials. And also feel free to comment down below what you like and maybe what you didn't like about this tutorial or if you have any questions concerning visual effects and after effects, let me know in the comments below. So now let's build this from scratch. Let's start with creating a new composition and we make it 1920 by 1080, which is full HD and click OK. And we are going to create a new layer. So as we are building all of this in 3D, think of it that each layer is a sheet of paper. So at first we start with one blank sheet. Let's make it white. So for that we hit Control Y. We can just call this our floor and hit OK. So this is our first paper and to give it a bit more of a paper look, let's just bring out the grid effect and we don't want to have the alpha so we don't want to see the checkerboard beneath it so let's just switch it to normal and now we can't see the grid because the color is white. So let's just make this one not completely black but almost black and we can just play with the width and height of these boxes and therefore we just have to change this from corner points to width and height sliders. And now you can just create the notepad as you like. And I'm also going down with the opacity a little bit so that this almost looks real. And what I have done is I added a turbulent displace effect after that and played with the amount and size a little bit just to randomize it. Maybe just like so. Okay, and now we have the floor, but later on I want to use that paper for everything we built. So I want to use it as floor as well as as wall and I also want to use it for all the arches, for the archway, so the hallway that we are going to create. So therefore I'm going to pre-compose it. Move all attributes into that new composition and just call it floor and hit OK. So now we have the floor with no effects and inside that we have the floor, maybe we just call this paper and the paper has all the effects on it that make up the paper structure. And by pre-composing all of this and bringing it into a new composition, I can cut out parts and also the effects get cut out. But now let's get this thing going. I said we want to make a 3D scene, so we have to convert it into 3D and nothing easier than that. We just click on this 3D layer button. And now you see we have the Y axis, the X axis and Z. And by clicking W, we get the rotation and now we can simply rotate it. And when you hold down shift, it snaps to 45 degrees. At the moment we don't see it because we are looking pretty flat on the paper. So let's directly create a camera. So we go to layer, new, camera. And the defaults are pretty fine. Like a 15 millimeter lens is what your eye would see. So a lower number would be a wider angle. So let's just keep it with a 50 millimeter, hit OK. What can we do with that? So when we have the camera selected, we can hit the C button, C for camera, and you get this first icon. And when you hold down your left mouse, you can see that you can orbit around. And remember, you're not rotating the paper, you're rotating the camera that watches the paper. So let's reset this. And when you hit C the next time, you get a rotation wheel put it once again. So now you have a pan tool. You can go up and down and left and right with the camera. And when you hit C the next time, you have a zoom in. So if you click on the left mouse button and drag in, your camera zooms in and out. 
So let's quickly just reset the camera. Now we go to the pen tool by hitting C three times and I'm just bringing this down. So now we have a floor. I'm just scaling this up and I'm just pushing this back. And at the moment I'm using the Y axis for this because remember we have rotated the whole layer 90 degrees. Okay, now we have a floor. We can click on the floor and hit Control D to make a copy of it and call this the arch and bring that one out. And here we wanna create this door, this archway. Nothing easier than that. We take the rectangular tool and just cut out the door and on the mask we go to subtract. Now what we have, when I solo this, we have created this hole inside our paper texture. And to create this arch, there are two ways you could do it. You could either take the ellipse tool and just create another circle and also subtract this one. That's one way to create it or I can simply go to the pen tool or hit G which opens up the pen tool and click in the middle here and still holding down the mouse button. And when I drag out here, you see that I have those handles and now I can just bring this up. So both of the ways work just fine. But at the moment you see it's not in 3D space. So I'm also hitting the 3D switch for that one, clicking on it and I'm just bringing this up because remember we just moved the camera a little bit. So I'm just bringing this into position again, just like that. And now, now we're almost done with our 3D model. All we have to do is copy the arches so that we have a bunch of them and just offset them in the Z position. So that's, that is pretty easy. We click on the arch, hit Control D for duplicate, click on P to see the position. And at the moment it is at position zero and we can just push this back. Let's just maybe push it back like always by a thousand. Then we duplicate it again, go to the position, make this one 2000, do it once more. Now we're at 3000. And just to see it a bit better, I'm changing this from one view to two views. Now I can see two different views. This is a top view at the moment. So you see this big one here is the paper that we stretched out. And then we have those arches that are all behind each other. But you can also just look for a custom view. Now you can just click this C button again, which brings up the camera again. And here you can see how this is set up at the moment four cards basically, four paper cards, exactly like you would do it if you would build it with real paper on your table, for example. Let's switch back to one view. Let's just create some more instances, maybe one more with 4,000. And then we just go to the first one. And here we wanna bring it closer to the camera. So we're at zero at the moment. So let's make it minus 1,000 and maybe just one more at minus 2000. Okay, looking nice, but not really cool. So let's work on that. I may just wanna duplicate the floor, call it wall, rotate it, and just push it to the side. Okay, now we have a wall over here and this hallway. Okay, now let's work on the fun parts, which is setting up lights and fine tweaking the camera. So let's bring out a light, layer, new, light. An ambient light would be a light that affects the whole scene in the same way, so to say. So later on, when we have set our lights for the details, you could bring out an ambient light and just make it darker or brighter overall. But at the moment, we want to work on the basic look of this. So let's bring out some point lights. And you can directly see what this is doing when we create one. Let's just leave it at the defaults and work on that later on and hit OK. And now you see we have a light and I can push this back in C space and everything reacts to the light. Just bringing this on top. So now we wanna have the lights in the middle of all these walls. So nothing easier than that. We can hit the P for the position and remember at position zero, thousand, two thousand and so on and so on. So let's just make those lights on all 500 marks. And when I'm bringing that to the side now, it should be in between those two walls. Perfect, and let's just bring it to the top where it would normally be sitting. Okay, and now we have created our first light that interacts with the scene. Now let's fine tweak this a little bit. And therefore, we can go into the light options. The radius is the radius around the light where it affects the scene. At the moment, we are set to 500. So this from here to where it's black is 500. So if we increase that, we see more of the scene. 
perfect. Let's just push it more into the room here. And now let's just duplicate the light and go to the position. And now we want to position this at the 1500 mark. So it's between the next two walls. And let's just do this again. And I'm just skipping one. Let's just bring it directly to the 3500 position. Or maybe let's create the one at 2500, but just go down with the intensity. So now it looks a little bit more random. Maybe I'm going to position this slightly different. And now I'm going to create, as I told you before, a new light that's just for the overall look. And therefore we go to new light and this time we create an ambient light. And you see now the whole scene is just bright. So we go to the ambient light settings. Just go down with the intensity a lot. Okay, and let's also create a light at the very front of this. So we go to the position and this time we go to minus 500. Maybe directly to minus 2500 so we have the front wall lit up. And you can work on that and create as many lights as you want. And I'm just positioning some of the lights a little bit more random. And we are starting to get somewhere. Perfect, but still it does not look 100% realistic. And maybe you have already realized that we are not casting any shadows. The lights are set up that they cast shadow and we have a shadow darkness and a diffusion. Hmm. But what about our walls that we have created? So let's just click on the first arch and as soon as you have clicked on the three layer switch, you also get material options. And here at the moment cast shadows is turned off. So now we can just click on all our 3D layers, select all of them, go to the material options and cast shadows on. And now they interact with each other. So now let's just play with some of the settings from the lights here. For example, we can make that radius way bigger. And now you see that we have a really nice shadow over here that we can also make a bit more diffuse. And just keep in mind the diffusion is not in percent but in pixels. I'm just going to do that for some more of the lights. And now we are starting to get somewhere. This is really looking great. And remember, we still have the ambient light to work against all of that that we are doing here. So if the light gets too bright, we can simply go down here a little bit and we still have the look of the scene that we wanted. Great, you could also give it a little bit of a color. So this is a really nice way to work. To finalize this, let's animate the camera and also add depth of field to make this look realistic. So we go to the camera, go to the transform and just set keyframes for the point of interest and the position and then maybe go to the four second mark. And now I can just click the C button again until I have the tool that I want and I'm just panning downwards. Now I see that the floor is cut off. So just go to the floor and push it closer to the camera. Okay, there we have it. And don't mind about the quality at the moment. I've set this to quarter resolution at the moment. so that this will just render a bit faster. So this is what we have at the moment. Okay, we have this subtle movements of the camera that also helps sell the shot. Now let's add depth of field and therefore we go to the camera options and there we have depth of field and we can turn it on. And what I always would recommend you to do that because it, sometimes it's a little bit hard to find the perfect focus distance, which is the distance from the camera to the point that you want to focus on. So maybe we want to have that wall and therefore it's always better to bring up the blur level as well as your aperture. In this way, everything is just completely blurred and this just helps you to find the right spot. Okay, now you see at about 200, 900 pixels distance, that wall is in focus. So let's just make a keyframe here and let's say at the end, our focus should be somewhere more in the back. So let's just bring this up. So now our focus point is about here. And now let's just bring down the blur level and the aperture again, because this is just way too much. And remember, the higher those values are, the slower everything will render. So this is what we have at the moment. And I'm just previewing this at quarter resolution and I'm skipping two frames at a time. So I don't have to wait too long to see a preview. This is looking really great and perfect for me. So as a last step, Let's animate the lights. Therefore, I know that the top light is the one that is furthest away. So let's start with that one. And therefore I'm just animating the intensity. So let's start at the one second mark. 
I click on the stopwatch for the intensity to set a keyframe and then just drag it like two frames to the front and go down to zero. Maybe not to zero, but something really small like 10. In that way, we already see a little bit here. And once this is done, a few frames later, the next light should go on, which is this light. And then I'm just doing the same thing for the next lights. So I'm just skipping this part really quick. So now let's just watch what we have created. This is really looking great. And if you also like what you have seen so far, then why don't you just click on that nice subscribe button to help me do more of this really cool tutorials for you. And I really hope that you got the principles of the 3D space in After Effects and what you can do with it. Like create 3D layers, offset them in space, add lights, shadows, cameras and depth of field and create really, really unique and awesome looks. And for now, I wish you a lot of fun in the 3D space in After Effects.